everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome to the School of Letters and Sciences Humanities Lecture Series. We are proud to present our fourth season of providing quality academic presentations, all of which are free and open to the public. So please let your family, friends, and colleagues know about it in the community. I would like to take a few minutes to thank all those who made the lecture series possible, from our Communication team is Karen Mancini and Ms. Deanna Johnson Mulligan. To our public affairs team, Mr. Marshall Terrell in the back. Mr. Stefan Alokovic, our videographer, and Dr. Fred Corey, our dean and school director. Our programs are also enhanced with the co-sponsorship of the ASU Canon Leadership Group, as well as Dean Neil Lester's Project Humanities. Our program will commence with each of the speakers, and then we will open the floor for a Q&A period. Please feel free to walk back anytime during the program and grab some cookies before they're gone. Tonight, we are presenting two very qualified gentlemen who will present his side of the death penalty question. However, I would like to share some information that is in press at Arizona Attorney Journal as we speak, and the title is The Capital Case Crisis in Maricopa County, What Little We Can Do About It. That means this is a draft to be published, but some information may change. According to the latest research by the authors of this journal article, one of them is Judge Godsfield, who is here tonight. Thank you, Judge. August 31st, 2008, the capital case load in Maricopa County Superior Court appeared dire with 136 cases and county, with a few apparent options to reduce these cases awaiting trial. On average, the length of time from the arrest to the execution of the sentence was over 20 years. However, as of July 21st, the 1st, 2011, the situation has drastically changed. In this graph, it explains that in April 2010, Interim County Attorney Mr. Rick Romney instituted a review of all pending capital cases applying the following standard. Whether there is a reasonable likelihood of a jury imposing the death penalty at trial. His review resulted in the disposal of approximately 20 capital cases, resulting in plea agreements or simply dismissal of the death the death notice completely. Today, the draft article indicates that there are 66 <coughs> cases awaiting trial or other disposition. So I hope tonight we will explore some of these issues as well as, as others dealing with capital punishment in Arizona, its evolution, its bureaucratic system, its morality, the people facing it, and applying it. I wanted to extend a special thanks to Mr. Jose Cardenas, a prominent Attorney General, Communion Leader and Activist, and Senior Vice President and General Counsel of ASU for sharing this information with us. Thank you, Dr. Cardenas. <laughs> now I'd like to present to you, and I'm honored to present the two presenters who indicated they're willing to sit next to each other. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Clemency received his bachelor's degree from the University of Notre Dame and his law degree from Rutgers University School of Law. He is a faculty associate in the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at ASU at the downtown campus. In addition to his teaching, he is also senior attorney for the Maricopa County Public Defender's Office, specializing in the defense of death penalty cases. Mr. Clemency has extensive experience defending a wide variety of other criminal matters, including homicides, sex crimes, assaults, drug crimes, property, property crimes, white collar crimes, and vehicular crimes. So he will be presenting the case against the death penalty. So please join me in giving the warm welcome to Mr. Andrew Clemency.
May I? Thank you, Myrna. And it's my pleasure uh, to be with all of you tonight. Can all of you hear me well? No. Moving closer. The mic? Is that better? Perhaps I should turn it on. <laughs> Not really sure. Oh, okay, here we go. All right. That's loud. All right, well, anyhow, um, again, welcome. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, as Myrna mentioned, um, I'm a lawyer here in town, but I also teach here at ASU, so it's really gratifying um, that they invited me here, and it's especially gratifying to see uh, a number of familiar faces, some of my uh, former students from this past summer, uh, and of course, Judge Gottsfield. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna get into um, some of my remarks uh, concerning the death penalty. All right, um, I'm not gonna talk too much about the process because I think Mr. Catani may uh, of how death penalty cases are adjudicated. Um, but one of the things that you probably should know is that um, all people facing the death penalty uh, get uh, two lawyers appointed. Um, generally speaking, those lawyers are paid for uh, by the taxpayers. Um, death penalty cases take an awful long time to try. Uh, there tend to be many um, highly paid experts uh, involved in death penalty trials. Uh, we have very large budgets, and uh, the appellate process takes a very, very long time. And just to illustrate how long, in fact, it takes, um, Arizona executed um, someone who uh, had a death verdict, I think it was about a month ago. Does that sound about right? Um, and that person uh, committed the murder for which he was executed in 1987, just so you know. And that is fairly typical in Arizona, uh, 24 years from the time of the murder to the time of the execution. So let's talk about um, some things that people think about the death penalty and some things that you guys may think about the death penalty. And before I jump into my remarks, let me offer you this thought. Uh, the, your views on the death penalty are probably very deeply held views. And I don't think for a moment that I am really likely to change your views in a half an hour or less about the death penalty. Uh, in fact, uh, when I'm doing a trial, if uh, in the course of talking to prospective jurors, uh, I discover that someone has uh, strongly held views against the death penalty, I make no effort to try to change their minds. Because it's pointless. Um, instead of doing that, what do you think that I do do? What I do is try to get rid of them. Just try to get them off the jury. Because I'm not gonna change their mind. So. I'm not expecting to change your minds at all, but hopefully I may educate you a little bit about the realities of the issue and provide you with some information that you might not know about it. Um, there's a lot of common misconceptions about the death penalty. For example, one of the main arguments in favor of the death penalty is this idea that it deters murder. Um, as some of you may know, or maybe not, uh, the reality is that that's not true. There has been an enormous number of studies uh, conducted over the years on this issue of deterrence, and virtually all of them have reached the same conclusion, and that is that there is no measurable deterrent effect for the death penalty. The murder rate in states that have the death penalty is about the same as the murder rates in states that don't, adjusting for various other socioeconomic and demographic factors that might influence those statistics. So deterrence um, is not really a viable um, argument in favor of the death penalty. And keep in mind, the whole concept of deterrence in the criminal justice system 
is that people sort of make rational um, decisions and rational evaluations about their conduct. Um, if deterrence is, is real, then it presupposes that potential murderers are going to engage in this sort of cost-benefit analysis about whether it's worth it to kill someone if they might potentially face the death penalty for doing so. Now that idea, frankly, is wacky for a variety of reasons. Um, most murderers are not particularly rational people or particularly thoughtful people. Most murderers also, by and large, probably don't think they're going to get caught, or at least a lot of them don't. And frankly, most people who are likely to commit murder are really not sufficiently educated about the laws of the jurisdiction they live in in order to really engage in that kind of an analysis anyway. Even if they happen to know that the state they live in has the death penalty, which they probably don't, they have no idea what type of murder is really going to trigger the death penalty. So again, study after study after study has determined that there is no deterrent effect um, for having